This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we're the ones who've encouraged you all along to like and share them on social media and with all your friends and neighbors because it's time for Joanne's World of Nutrition brought to you by Nutrition World. Joanne's Nutrition World in downtown Fort Pierce and hosted by Joanne. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's having an amazing morning. A little chilly here in the Treasure Coast, which I absolutely love. But you know what I just realized? We have had such amazing guests on the last few times that we haven't done the breath work. So I, I definitely want to do the breath work, right? So that's right. It's a quick way to relieve some stress or anything that might be on your right. mind. Right. Well, it's it's breathing, right? Yeah. So yes, essential for all of us. So I hope all my listeners participate. We'll just do a couple rounds. We'll do through the nose only, five seconds in and five seconds out. So let's do three rounds, okay? Straight, Since I'm not doing no the whole. Pause, right? No, no pause, pause okay. this time. So five in through the nose, five out through the nose, and three again, rounds. Three All right, everyone, let's exhale out anything that doesn't feel good. <sighs> All right, here three, we go. One, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, in, two, three, four, five, release. Two, three, four, five. One more. In, two, three, four, five, release. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you very much. The best counter in town. <laughs> All right. So welcome to the show. Thanks for spending some time with me this morning. Today's topic is a tough one for me. Um, there's a lot of information behind the symptomology of it. Many people are coming in recently with this issue. Sometimes it could be an urgent situation, acute, and then for others it's chronic. And keep in mind when it comes to acute or urgent, I do feel that that's when you want to go to your medical systems, whether it be urgent care or the ER or your doctor, if it's convenient, and just get an idea of what's going on. And then it's time for you to become your own doctor as well and partner with your health system to learn as much about it as possible because you know best what you're doing 24 seven. So sometimes the expectation is that after you know years of not being in touch with the medical system you have an urgent matter like your heart or kidneys or just anything and you go there and you're kind of surprised that they throw a lot of medications at you but that's because they don't know you as well as you know yourself so it's time sometimes to either take accountability or just kind of research yourself your own life so today the topic is edema okay so that is when water goes to areas in the body that doesn't necessarily belong there and i mentioned that the topic is really difficult because water swelling all over the body can be for thousands of different reasons but i have found recently that people are coming in kind of upset that they're on all these different blood pressure drugs or diuretics and they don't understand why, but that is usually the go-to. If you go in and you're having swelling near your organs or your blood pressure is not being regulated properly, diuretics will be given. And some of my customers have mentioned lovingly and casually that they're not drinking water because they feel that will help the situation because they assume if the doctor is giving them a diuretic, then water is the issue and that's might be causing the problem. So that's why today's show topic is how let's go at cause, not symptomology. Let's not blame water, 
for what is happening in your body because all my listeners know I absolutely love water and it is crucial for our health. And so we don't want to blame it for any of our difficulties that we might be having. having. All right. So the first cause of swelling in the body or edema is sugar. Now, I know I've discussed sugar a million times on the show, and it might sound like a broken record, but we have to first and foremost take a look at our sugar consumption. Our body doesn't need much sugar to regulate itself, to function. Yes, we do need some glucose. It's helpful for the heart. It's helpful for the brain, but tiny, tiny bits. And when I say the word sugar, I mean the byproduct of natural whole foods that are being broken down. I never mean sugar in the forms of cookies and cakes and candies and soda pop. And I know my listeners understand that, but if you are helping a coworker or a family member with this conversation, you want to stress to them that glucose does come naturally from our natural whole foods. It will break down into that. So that's why, like, for instance, vegetables are a carbohydrate. So when some people get defensive about, oh, I can never do a keto diet, I heard that's not healthy, or a low-carb diet, that is not true. You still get plenty plenty of the carbohydrates that need to operate our body, but they're coming from whole food forms, nothing processed. So that way you kind of take away that whole defensiveness. The body never needs to operate on processed, refined, empty calorie food. So that's the first reality that we all have to face. And I've confessed on this radio show throughout the years that I understand how difficult it is to stay away from the carbohydrates. You know, everywhere we look, we have the bread, the crackers, the pasta, the rice, the tortillas, the taco night, like it's everywhere. But if you just take a hard look at how many grams you're taking in a day, and then decide maybe this month, instead of 65 grams, you might cut it down to 55 grams and then the following 45 grams. If you do not have an acute situation happening that's really causing damage each and every day of your life. Um, So we're gonna talk about those symptoms soon, but I just really want you to know that any amount of sugar reduction is a good amount. So just start somewhere. Um, I have some clients that it's their liquids. They're constantly having sugar intake with their beverages. And sometimes it's sneaky. They're going to their favorite restaurants and getting a sweet tea. They might only get one sweet tea a day, but it's 32 ounces and they there might be 10 teaspoons of sugar in that sweet tea. So if you just cut it back to like a 16 ounce sweet tea versus 32 ounce, there you go. You just cut your sugar intake in half. So again, watch out for the hidden sugars that especially that are being served at the fast food um, restaurants and regular restaurants because they're not purposely trying to kill you because they don't know what else you're consuming in your day. But again, the beverages are pretty sneaky. And also too, food. So food also has a lot of sugar in it. Um, And when I say that, it's the worst type of sugar. Because when food is on the grocery store shelves, they want to dehydrate it. So that way it's non perishable, that those crackers, and I'm not talking about just the obvious like cookies and sweets, I'm talking about the non obvious like chips and crackers. Um, the rice mixes, they have hidden sugars in them. And unfortunately, because it's dehydrated, it's a double whammy to our system. Because if you look at most food in nature, it has moisture. It has things that help it digest and get nutrients into your body. So you create so many imbalances when you eat foods that are processed 
because of that. So they're dehydrated and they usually have too much artificial sodium sources. And so the body gets crazy. It doesn't know where to put the water, where to take the water out. And it tries its best because it's brilliant in its design, um, but it's still, it, it has a lot to overcompensate for if you keep choosing sugary or dehydrated processed food products. So the one statistic that I want you to think about if you're really still not sold that sugar is bad, which I know all my listeners understand it, but just in case you're trying to convince someone else, for every gram of glucose that's stored, so sugar gets stored as glucose, which in turn turns to glycogen to be stored in the body. There is almost three grams of water, okay, and also it drags in potassium to the mix to form the glycogen in the body. And that is why if you do a real high sugary meal, you'll feel puffy even the next day um, because it's dragging water along for the ride, I believe to protect the body, okay? But it's crazy how you can have one meal that's really salty and sweet and the next day your eyes are puffy, your hands are puffy, your ankles are puffy, just from one meal. So can you imagine if you're constantly eating this refined food that's full of sugar and salt, you will definitely start retaining water. And again, that's a symptom. Water is not the cause. Um, so you definitely want to really be careful of that. The other problem is that there's such a fine line with potassium and sodium because sodium is critical in our bodies critical and so when you're robbing potassium every time you store the glucose okay you're also causing a b1 deficiency b1 is critical a lot of rehab centers where they're working with people that are struggling with alcoholism will give b1 i do believe all the b vitamins should be important and all kind of used together i don't like just targeting one nutrient um, because the whole family should be invited so i say um, but b1 depletion is a serious issue for when you're consuming too much sugar and again, alcohol is just one of those things. And unfortunately, when someone's really struggling with alcoholism and giving it up, they usually turn to high sugary foods. And that is kind of not only allowed, but kind of the system that many rehabs and AA uses, you know, let's do the cookies, let's do the donuts um, to feed that glucose system so they don't crave the alcohol. But in the body, the uh, sugar still does the damage. And if you're unsure of the damage that sugar is doing in the body, just look up the side effects of diabetes because kidney um, disease, eye blindness, circulatory functions, it all comes hand in hand. So even though you might be diagnosed with a vision issue or you might be diagnosed with a circulatory issue, that again is the symptom, it's not the cause. So everything can still go back to sugar consumption. All right, so I think I talked about sugar a lot, okay? So the next thing, and there is alternatives too. There is alternatives to sugar, um, but sugar alcohols are being questioned now as well. I do believe it's because on the tongue, the duodenum senses sugar and it doesn't really care what type of sugar, and it still can secrete insulin. So again, be careful of that. Just try to appreciate things that don't have a sweet taste to repair systems. And then if you wanna slowly introduce a, some sweetness back into your life, that would be great. And when people question this philosophy, I always say, well, if you're willing to give it 21 days, just, and if you don't have a problem with sugar, 21 days shouldn't be a problem. If you do 21 days where you do more vegetables, more healthy fats, more protein, and less refined food products, especially carbohydrates and sugar, if you don't feel remarkably better by the end of the 21 days, 
then you don't have a problem. But usually people come back and do say um, their circulation is better, they have less swelling in their hands and feet, um, they don't feel as puffy, especially under their eyes where the kidney waste backup represents itself. Um, so again, that's something you could just try. Whether you call it low carb, keto, healthy keto, just take out those refined uh, sugary products and those processed foods and give that a shot. All right, so the other cause of edema is sodium. Now, sodium is a tricky one, okay, because in our body, it's not water. It's a mixture of, like, let's call it lymph, plasma. Um, I love what um, my massage therapist, she just took a lymphatics course, and basically our whole body is lymph. But when that lymph moves into different channels, they call it different things, okay, like blood. But in that fluid material throughout our body, H2O is only one component. It's also filled with lots, lots of electrolytes. So your potassium, your calcium, your magnesium, your sodium, your chlorides, that's what makes up that fluid. And it is critical that we keep up with these minerals to keep up with this fluid. And so us restricting sodium to a point that we have none in our diet, that only damages that beautiful, delicate fluid that's in our bodies. And so it will try to make up for it somewhere or it will damage the system long term. Now, when I say sodium, of course, I don't mean those processed soups, those canned um, items, those, um, you know, uh, salty cr crackers or chips. I mean, in nature, we were designed that our vegetables have that beautiful homeostasis of all those electrolytes, especially sodium and potassium. If you've ever been to my store, you know I mention celery a lot. I, it's almost like a joke because no matter what you come into my store and you complain about, I'll say, do you eat celery? Can you eat celery? Do you like celery? Eat lots of celery. It's kind of my suggestion that you need to get more vegetables in that naturally contain the perfect balance of your electrolytes and your H2O. So fluid filled vegetables are critical to get rid of excess water pooling in areas of our body that we don't need it. And it, it is suggested with potassium for just one example of those electrolytes that the RDA is recommended 4,700 milligrams a day. That would take seven to 10 servings of vegetables a day. Now, I absolutely love vegetables. I discuss vegetables all, almost on a daily basis, but I know I don't get that many vegetables in a day. So the average American only gets a cup and a half of vegetables a day that is kind of sad and scary at the same time so you can like i use dr berg's electrolyte powder um, it's i sell it at the store the reason i choose his is because it has the highest amount of potassium i can find in a drink that's palatable there are other great companies out there for instance, that don't use stevia, they don't flavor their electrolytes, they're using the highest quality sodium from real salt or Celtic salt, they're phenomenal products. But I can't get my kids to drink those. They taste like salt water, <laughs> um, but they do have the high amount of potassium like Dr. Berg's. So whatever one you choose or consume the seven to 10 servings of vegetables a day, which are cups, by the way, the serving size, that would be awesome. You're getting all the polyphenols, you're getting all the nutrients, preferably organic. So, and that's a whole nother show. So give that a try, because that will also draw out that stagnant fluid that's around areas that do not belong and help draw it out because the body now knows that it has the electrolytes to create that beautiful cell transmission of fluids um, that's needed to have the body regulate itself. What's my expression that I say each week is the body knows what to do 
if we just get out of the way. <laughs> so you just give your body a little bit of a break and a little healthy nourishing thoughts and food, and it can really start repairing itself. But if you go into a chronic situation where you ignore that swelling in your hands or you ignore the ankles that are swollen or the calves that are swollen or just the puffy face, you know, each week, then that cause is going to create more imbalances throughout the organ and tissue systems. So really, really pay attention to your body in the morning when you wake up. Are you swelling? Are you holding water in areas? Now, again, if you know you just went out for Chinese food and you're just always swelling, you can't take your rings off after that type of meal, then that's acute. That's one time. But I need to mention on that note that MSG, which I think most of us know now that MSG is in Chinese, they call it the Chinese food seasoning, right? So MSG, monosodium sodium glutamate, is very dangerous, okay? And if we go to the Chinese restaurant and go to the counter and say, hey, can you make sure you don't put MSG in the food? Sometimes... They do take us seriously because they know it causes us headaches and it also causes lots of edema, right? But what the issue is, is MSG is in about 60 different names and it's in our processed food supply. So I'm going to give you some of the names and then we're going to take a quick break after this so you can kind of maybe take a peek in your pantry or your fridge and see if you have some of these names. So glutamic acid, glutamate, calcium glutamate, magnesium glutamate, yeast extract, anything that says hydrolyzed, so hydrolyzed protein, calcium cassinate, sodium cassinate, those are in all the shredded cheeses, yeast food, yeast nutrient, autolyzed yeast, gelatin, texturized protein, soy protein isolate, whey protein isolate, um, and then their most common names besides MSG is Betsin and Ajinomoto. Um, those are the Chinese names. So you really, and bullions, broth, carrageen, those also have the glutamic acid, which is the MSG. So those will create swelling everywhere. Um, and issues. So if you do Chinese food once a month, you might be thinking you're doing okay, but those headaches that you're getting every day, um, the, the swelling in the fingers, take a look at your food supply and where you're eating and what they're seasoning your food with. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Take a look. Take a look at some of the foods that you ate this morning and see if you have any of those ingredients in it. I'll be right back with talking about edema and water that doesn't belong in certain areas. <laughs> Joanne's World of Nutrition will continue in just a moment right here on WPSL, the talk of the Treasure Coast. Hi, this is Joanne from Nutrition World and Wellness Center. I am really excited to introduce new guests and topics to my show every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. here on WPSL, where my listeners can call in on any topic. If I don't know the answer, I'll try to find it. We want to help you become the best version of yourself. We'll have nature paths, coaches. I am looking forward to sharing my years of experience with my listeners so we can enjoy this life journey together. This is Joanne's Nutrition World in the Crass Square, formerly known as the Arcade Building, located at US 1 and Orange Avenue, across from Fort Pierce City Hall. Open Monday through Friday from 10 to 4, Saturdays 10 to 3. Taking appointments for the Wellness Center online at joannesnutritionworld.com or call 772-464-3598. This is WPSL Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. We now return to Joanne's World of Nutrition with the one and only Joanne Seeger. Hi, everybody. Thanks for spending some time with me this morning. 
We are talking about a very complicated subject this morning. So again, I'm trying to hit on the things that I'm familiar with, that I've worked with people and have seen some good results. Again, we could talk about this for hours and hours because it involves all your tissues, tissues, all your tissues, your organs, your lymphatic system. It um, is just everything, like everything you do um, can result in water pooling in areas that it doesn't belong. I'll give the heart as one example. So the heart has this beautiful sac around it. I always think of like a baby in the uterus, right? So it has this beautiful sac around it to protect it, to keep all the valves that are feeding the heart where they don't kind of get bundled, they're smooth, um, there's in and out of fluids, um, you know, simply and effectively, right? But if there is, um, say, an infection or there's um, parts of that fluid that have a response uh, to a viral situation or something like that, it's going to create more fluid around that. So again, the fluid's not to blame, the infection is to blame. But right away, when we get fluid, we get nervous, so we give diuretics. And so when you give a diuretic, so you're not addressing the cause, you're addressing the symptom of fluid around the heart, okay? So you do need the fluid around the heart to protect the heart, but you don't want too much that's pushing against the heart, right? So you do the diuretics, but the diuretics will pull out your sodium. Might sound good to most people that think of sodium as the bad guy, but if you do that, that pulling of the sodium, you're also gonna yank out potassium too. So it's critical that we have enough of all these electrolytes to make our muscles contract. Think of the heart, our eyes, our, there's 300 different functions that these electrolytes do. I've been saying the word 300 for so many years, but it's probably thousands, right? But it's critical to open up locks in the cellular um, plasma to make energy, to make every system work. So again, there are natural ways to go about this. So definitely have those conversations. If you walk out of a difficult situation and one, you're glad you're alive because they saved you. They saved your heart. They cleared some some blockages and now you're on different blood pressure meds you might be on a blood thinner you might be on a diuretic okay again you become a really good patient and research for yourself what have you been doing the last 30 years not the last 30 days what have you been doing the last 30 years and don't fault the doctor that you showed up at his doorstep okay you want to really consider sitting down with a nutritionist a dietitian um, a little coaching plug for myself only 35 dollars for a half hour or an hour for 50 dollars you know just sit down and get to know what you might have been doing you know are you using too many processed seed oils they're oh my god they're plagued in our food system the msg that we just discussed you want to sit down and sometimes your insurance will cover um, a dietetics appointment and they might give you some recipe ideas or food suggestions all right um, but definitely take your health into your hands as a partnership with the medical system you're using, okay? So here we go. So we are taking a diuretic, we're lowering our potassium. I already gave you the first step to help offset that is eat more vegetables. And if you really don't like vegetables and right now you're, you're kind of rolling your eyes because you'll only eat some green beans in a day, then just get the Dr. Berg electrolyte powder or a very healthy electrolyte powder. So I'm not saying the word Gatorade or sugary or artificially colored or artificially flavored type of beverages, just really natural electrolyte powders. All right, so the other trick, if you wanna try it, but I have never tried it, 
is the rind of a watermelon. So if you eat or juice the rind of a watermelon, that really helps because um, it has tons of potassium in the rind. It'll help you release um, stagnant water throughout your system. All right, and we have a caller. Good morning, Steve. How are you this morning? Oh, well, I'm actually great. Um, you're talking to a guy who just who set a record for the largest lipoma ever taken off a human heart. Uh, 17 by 17 by five, and weighed 1138 grams. Holy moly! And yeah, I, I got the Guinness record now, and that's not a record you want. Uh, but I learned so much. Um, I went to a Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, and I learned about nutrition, which is probably the most important thing in your heart. And I also learned about uh, how to take care of your body so that your heart can maximize the nutrients you take in. So people really can get educated. I, I absolutely love that, Steve. That is such a great point. And may I ask what your symptomology was? Like, how did they discover it? Uh, shortness of breath, high blood pressure, redness in the face. Uh, lack of appetite, fatigue all the time. And then they did an echo on it and holy moly. And I, I was lucky I had Dr. Gillano, who's the number one heart surgeon in America. And I went to the number one heart clinic in the world, which saved my life. Because they said when they opened my chest, he said my whole staff gasped. They had never seen a tumor that big. And, where where uh, was it situated? It all, that was... Uh, going on eight years ago. And how Still old here. were you when that happened? Pardon me? How old were you when that was ha when that happened? 56. 56. I'm glad you put that because I always tell people that, you know, now heart issues are coming up at 35 because you know that tumor didn't start at 56. It started way before oh, no. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the thing that bothered me was the doctor I was going to notice it when it was two by three. And I said, what are we going to do with it? And he said, well, we don't want to crack the chest open with that small of a tumor. Well, that tumor grew like it was on steroids. Right. And um, I was lucky. I was very lucky. Yes, you are lucky. And, and I'm so glad you're sharing this info. So if I was to ask you for our audience, what would be your number one tip that you've learned um, through your journey? What would it be? Turn vegetarian and educate yourself on what a vegetarian is and what nutrition is. Instead of re playing a video game, uh, read the book. <laughs> okay. I love that, Steve. Well, I appreciate the call. And um, yes, you want to take care of your heart, right? Absolutely. And I well, love... Well, if it stops, so do you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to call in. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. Have You're an welcome. awesome day. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, you know, that I'm kind of glad that he mentioned that it came about at 56 because so many people don't even think about their heart um, until they're in their late 60s, unless for some reason their annual blood doesn't come up right and then they get that quick call from a receptionist at the practice that says oh by the way this is off or that's off you know just do this and and again um and i love that steve mentioned a healthy version of being a vegetarian um it's tricky for most people having a healthy diet in general so whether you choose being vegan vegetarian or carnivore or keto whatever you choose there is healthy versions of that and in no diet plan does any dietitian or nutritionist that has been schooled properly will ever suggest processed foods empty calorie foods um, there's no plan that includes those there are some people that kind of go along with the standard american diet and they will say okay you know as long as you only do one dessert a day or if you only do you know a few cups of this a day or a couple uh, cocktails at night um that is really that moderate viewpoint has gotten us into trouble because it's not really about the quantity it's about the quality 
okay? So if we keep focusing on fat grams, sugar grams, and then we're reading labels, then we're not looking at how many nutrients does this offer us and is it natural nutrients or is it enriched with synthetic nutrients that are not delivering us any health and they're actually causing more harm than good. So again, no matter what, a, a lot of us really get trapped in that whole thinking of, well, that diet's bad and that information changes. But one thing that hasn't changed, at least in the 38 years I've been doing this, is that processed, empty calorie foods are bad, no matter how you look at it, okay? So start there. If, if you don't want to label yourself and define yourself, um, that's okay. But start there. And I'll give you an example of the meat industry. And I do eat meat, but I eat really, like my meat choice is extremely picky, okay? And again, it's quality, not quantity. But if you're buying regular industrialized animal protein, then it is not helping your health and it is hurting you. So some people will go out and eat a lot of meat throughout their day and say, well, there's the keto diet or the carnivore diet and they preach that it's natural. Well, that's not necessarily true. The, the people that are speaking about it also put a huge, huge subject matter about the quality of it and that it's fed properly and they graze properly and the quantity is also of concern. So again, whatever you choose to do, please do it correctly. And I'm here to help um, if you can't find a nutritionist um, in your area. All right, so let's see what we're gonna talk about next. Actually, this goes right into it. So um, about your kidney um, not filtering properly. So when your kidney system or your liver system are not working up to par, you can have um, swelling in different parts of your body. There is um, like fatty liver and cirrhosis of the liver can cause some major problems with your electrolyte balance and fluids holding on in your body. So what is the number one thing that causes liver and kidney damage, of course, is the sugar. The next thing is those seed oils. So when I say seed oils, Think of also canola oil, vegetable oil. Um, my son, when I went to his apartment, I saw this big, huge bottle of vegetable oil, like the one that's probably $3.99 and it looks like a gallon. And I just like, my heart literally just dropped. I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> it was, it's just so upsetting. The, in the last 10 years, we've increased the consumption of our seed oils by 135 fold. That's insane, insane. And these oils have had everything removed that's natural, that could be anything close to what it was in the beginning, you know. Um, and they use solvents. Like last week's show, we were talking about solvents and how dangerous they are. But because they're petroleum based, they allow them in the country. And the hexane um, is like the worst. And with these seed oils, they constantly put them through this processing and these solvents to get to this clear, odorless, slicky oil um, that you can cook with or fry with that has no chance of really getting even rancid anymore because they've taken anything out of it that is natural. So when you put it into your body, I believe just from common sense that when the body gets overwhelmed with anything that it doesn't know its origin, it doesn't know what to do with it, it's a waste product that it's gonna send to the liver and the kidney systems and just pray that it's gonna know what to do. But when it gets overloaded, you know, because we're constantly dealing with toxins and waste products, whether it be through our environment or our diet or just, um, you know, a cream that we're throwing on. Just, we are constantly bombarding our liver and kidney system. So really be careful of those seed oils. Um, 
And oh, and I just want to go back real quick. I forgot to mention with the MSG, if you really don't think if it's a, a big deal, most countries have banned MSG. Look into that research and why, okay? Because if you or a loved one is suffering with any mood disorders, depression, anxiety, or constant headaches, or uh, frontal lobe pressure, MSG could be the cause, okay? So really uh, take a, a deep look at that. Same thing with the oils. If you don't think um, you have a lot of the oils in your life, take a look at the restaurants you're going to. Look at the back of the house. You know, a lot of restaurants are kind these days. They let us peek in through their windows and stuff, but just take a look at what oils they're using. Most, you know, affordable restaurants, they don't have the budget to use high quality extra virgin olive oil. Um, so they are using these great big gallons of these processed seed oils. So just take a look because that can really cause some problems with the kidney and the livers. Um, and let's talk about the kidneys again. So I love my analogies, okay? So think of your AC filter, right? If you left the same AC filter um, in your home for a year, your AC will not be as effective or not effective at all, okay? But as soon as you take that dirty one in where all those little spots of the filter are filled with the dust and allergens and pollutants, and you put a new one in, all of a sudden the AC starts working effectively again. But if you put it off too long, the AC will get damaged itself. So no matter how many new filters you put in, it's not going to work. I do believe the kidneys are similar. The kidneys are so forgiving. They really love us. Um, I feel like we got a little extra just in case, right? But it can only put up with so many bad choices, okay? So you want to clean those filters. And again, the fluid that cleans them is this mixture of minerals, electrolytes, your sodium, your potassium, your magnesium. So you need to eat your vegetables and or something similar and healthy that liquid wise to make sure you bathe these filters and help get these impurities out. So if you're taking a diuretic and you are drinking caffeinated beverages, like a cup of coffee, Cu couple cup oh my gosh okay a couple cups of coffee in the morning and maybe one or two cocktails at night that's dehydrating your kidneys even further than what your diuretic is doing and i'm sure if you read the fine print on the diuretic sheet it will say please do not consume caffeinated beverages or alcohol during this you know use of this medication because it doesn't want to dehydrate you so it's really critical that you make some, you know, difficult choices about the caffeinated products or even colas. If you're still drinking, you know, soda or colas, be very, very careful because that's a double whammy. That's sugar and caffeine at the same time. So a double whammy. So really the kidneys love that beautiful um, mineral rich, electrolyte rich, fluid to go through and clean those filters, okay? And the less toxic choices you make, the less work the kidneys have to do and the liver. Um, but right now we're talking about the kidneys. So give your kidneys some loving and really just look at your each day and say, okay, how can I eliminate the burden that the kidneys have? Um, one more analogy. You know, if I have someone that is going to bless me with cleaning my house, I will go through the house really quickly, maybe just for a half hour, and do the obvious that I can do quickly. Why? Because that way she can focus on the deeper things that I don't get time to do, right? So if I clear the countertop from all the mess or disorganization, then she can actually clean the counters, right? So think of your body the same way. The things that you can accomplish that is easy for you to each day, like breath work, like drinking enough water, eating some veggies, um, just taking a brisk walk, do what you can handle 
so the body can get to the deeper, more serious issues, okay? But you got to do your part to get ready for um, the deeper work, especially if it's a chronic condition for your liver and kidneys that have been going on for a while. All right, now let's talk about the liver. I love the liver. I think it's the most amazing organ we have. It is just like the kidney, super forgiving. Um, it will put up with a lot of nonsense, okay? Um, but when you have fatty liver um, or cirrhosis of the liver, these are signs, and this is not just an alcohol conversation, okay? A lot of sugar destroys the liver, the seed oils, processed food, um, just not enough activity, um, getting uh, lots of oxygen is necessary for the liver. So you want to look at nature of how to clean the liver and the gallbladder, by the way. The gallbladder, again, is taken out too quickly in this country. So it loves the bitters. So if you can handle eating a little bit of bitter foods in your day, that would be really amazing. So look at the vegetable kingdom and things that are bitter in nature or astringent. So your lemons, your limes, your radicchio. Radicchio is my favorite. I know I sound like a broken record on this one too, but it's really affordable. It holds up really well in the fridge. It's not so perishable like other produce items. It looks beautiful chopped up in a salad. Um, you know, make it a game with the family. Everyone has to eat one, um, one leaf of the radicchio a day. The bitter foods, I call it rotor rooter to your uh, gallbladder and your liver. Um, it's great. It brings in those minerals. It helps um, that fluid exchange and really a great idea to have bitter foods to your diet because the liver, if you, and I always try to give suggestions that aren't supplement based. If you don't want to spend the money on supplements, so be it, but you have to do a little extra um, through your diet, if not. Um, so there is andrographis, absolutely affordable. Uh, you can get a two month supply for a little more than $23, I think. And andrographis is called the king of bitters amazing double blind clinical studies on andrographis for multiple reasons um, super safe i love andrographis and if you want to try the most bitter thing ever just put a little of that on your tongue that will wake you up <laughs> i love it but i love bitter stuff so um definitely uh, give that liver a fighting chance and get more bitter into your diet all right, the next one is the thyroid. Um, so thyroid could also be a cause. We're having a huge issue with thyroid and endocrine dysfunction in our country. Um, I do believe one of the most common sense reasons to me is the amount of uh, bromides and chlorides um, and fluorides that we're consuming. And when I talk about chlorides, I'm not talking about in the form of like a chloride salt that's natural in our blood system. I'm talking about the chloride through chlorine. So we have it in our water systems, we have it in our crackers, our pasta, our breads. We are using so much of this to, again, strip all vitality out of our food system to make it where it doesn't go perishable on the pantry shelf. So the thyroid loves iodine, it loves healthy food, it loves sleep, it loves relaxation, it loves love, right? So you want to stop destroying your endocrine system, especially your thyroid with processed food products. So if you have puffy tissue, especially around your face and neck, um, you want to uh, consider uh, taking a look at maybe going to an endocrinologist or taking a look at the thyroid health and what you're doing to help your thyroid and not hurt it. Um, the next thing um, I want to also talk about side effects of medications. So NSAIDs, uh, calcium channel blockers, steroids can also cause a lot of fluid retention. So if you are taking any medications, whether you're savvy enough to do an Excel spreadsheet or just do it on pen and paper on a pad, list all the different side effects each of your meds are doing in columns ne aligned next to each other. You might be surprised that you are just suffering daily with the side effects of the meds. You don't have another condition. 
you're just going through the side effects situation. So you can have a discussion with your doctor, maybe they can cut it back or maybe try something else. But remember, that's sometimes where you start. That's why I wanted to discuss it at the end. So start there with the side effects of meds. The other thing is lymphedema. So remember I mentioned the lymphatic system is your fluid system of your body. You gotta take really good care of it. This is your immune system. This is your everything. Um, and it loves exercise. It loves movement. I always have in my office a mini rebounder. It loves that up and down movement, massage, skin brushing. Um, never ever overlook these things just because they're not in a pill um it's not it's as important to move okay but the lymphatic system loves that up and down rebounder movement but taking brisk walks uh, doing contraction exercises anything that squeezes the the, the skin and the um, the fluids will help it do its job more effectively it wants to be moved so if you have um your bottom part portion of your legs are swelling and it's difficult to walk then lay down and move your body parts because it really needs you to keep moving if you get more sedentary because of your edema then the problem only gets worse so move move and move more thanks everybody i hope you have an amazing week and um I'll, oh next week will be a repeat just so everyone knows all right have a okay. great one You've been listening to Joanne's World of Nutrition, presented each week at this time by Joanne's Nutrition World. Downtown Fort Pierce, across from City Hall, US 1 at Orange Avenue. Formerly known as the Safe Historic Arcade Building, Crash Square now. By the way, this is WPSL, Fort St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast, webcaster to the world. Archives of this program are on YouTube. Go to WPSLTV.com.